seems to be something over here. Another one of these. Wow, you weren't kidding about Gaia's predilection for animal morphologies. Sure. Not totally expected given the rough natural terrain her bots will have to navigate. But I agree that there's something deeper going on here. Her designs aren't just functional. They feel almost like, well, tributes is the word that comes to mind. As though she's already mourning their loss. And not just for the disappearing fauna of our time, but creatures from the fossil record too. References to megafauna in some of her designs. So cool. Well, whatever Gaia thinks up, Hephaestus will empower her to build it. I just wish we could still be around in the century or two to see what she makes. I almost wonder if, like, Hades and Gaia are actually working together, considering that Hades is part of Gaia. I just I've seen these don't remember, or if they mentioned... In cauldrons. But of course. The birthing places of Gaia's machines. Okay. I just don't know if, like, what ha uh, if they had mentioned what Hades' programming was. Because it's clear that it's, like... Almost like a security function for Gaia, making sure things are safe. And it might have been tainted by the Pharaoh Plague? Who knows? Or someone sabotaged or something. Or it's possible that Gaia has just determined that humans are a plague on the planet and need to get rid of us. Who knows? But that does explain why... Hades knows us so well, it's because we were part of the, or the person I that it. related to us. I don't know. Office. I still think that we're like a clone it's or something so because. There's got to be a way inside. Keep looking. Done interrupting me, because all these machines refer to us as Elizabeth Sobek. So, I'm gonna have to assume she's some kind of clone. More eclipse. Careful now. Or at the very least, of being very, very, very genetically close to Elizabeth. Wait, wait, can I, can I get that from here? I can. Dr. Sobek, please archive this testimonial in Apollo. Cross-reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest ranked officer of the United States Armed Forces. The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory, a falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States and other nations during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth. And my one redeeming act, if any, was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world listening to this message, please note that I am sorry and that I wish you well. Sincerely, Aaron Harris. Yeah, because I'm not sure what's going on. I, it's apparent that Apollo, which is supposed to be the archive of all human knowledge, never got released, whether that was by Gaia's command or some Welcome malfunction. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina Ebaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, 
I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are immense. Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First, the construction of data repositories in cradle facilities around the world ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of a projected 180 million discrete data entries. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Arabic. Third, the transferal and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation for the centuries to come. And last, but not least, the development of the holographic interface and gamified curricula by which future humans will commune with Apollo, progressively unlocking heuristic learning modules, leveling up their knowledge and skills they will need to take control of the terraforming system. That ah. is the future towards which all of our efforts will be directed. That might be why Guy is doing Not what she's the doing. Of the past, <laughs> she doesn't want people in charge. But the seed for the flourishing of a new tree of knowledge. Welcome. And let us begin. Does this just reiterate it? Welcome to yeah, Apollo. Yeah, that's right, mate. The collective memory of the human species okay. and the wellspring of knowledge for oh. future generations. I am Samina Ebaji. The winner is encapsulated DNA. Over the past 10 years, I performed an ex exhaustive review of data storage solutions, magnetic, optical, quantum, even that in eternity tech that Foss was shilling a year or so ago. But every other solution has one or more fatal shortcomings. Too heavy to transport, too massive to install in the allotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure past 300 or 400 years, etc. Encapsulated DNA will easily hold 40 plus zettabytes for projecting for Apollo. There are still many details to finalize, of course. To start with, we need to select the inherent material in which will embed the molecules, already testing 16 candidate materials, as well as design and fabricate the power systems needed to seal reliquies that will keep the DNA at negative 18 degrees Celsius for 1,000 plus years. So long as I assure you that it didn't, fact that it didn't factor into my decision, May I confess that I deem it entirely fitting, indeed, prop, prop, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that right now, that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from mechanized extinction. It's not just ironic, but heroic. Life as the hero, be, life as the hero beating back the forces of oblivion. In any case, much to do. Until next time, peace be with you, Samina. So they stored that sounds awful assassin's creedy to me, storing info and DNA. It didn't give me the option yet, there we go. Apollo update. Over the past two months, the full benefit of our procurement of a copy of the Homer archive from Fair Zenith has made itself known, and as a result, all of Apollo's key deliverables are on schedule. Apollo has already surpassed 40 million discrete data entries and continues to grow. The physical science modules are effectively complete. The soft science modules close behind, world history, cultural data, and media archives are also on schedule. Language preservation is wrapping up a bit ahead of schedule due to falling short of our goal to preserve 4,500 languages. I suppose the tragic early loss of Papua New Guinea... Guinea I can't English, it's like 4 a.m doomed that goal from the outset, which attended, with attended curricula develops about to begin. Speaking of the heuristic curricula, they are performing well in testing with children and adolescents demonstrating high levels of engagement with the trust in the, in the Aristotle and Apasia personae. Personally, I find them highly engaging, especially when they debate. I wish half of my professors had been so entertaining. 
creative endeavor and cultural achievements. Apollo is. Can I come in through here? Or is it still closed? Of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before. <sighs> Specifically. What am I clipping on? Stop. This is gonna be a lot of freaking editing later. There's so much I have to like look at and listen to. I've already been at this for what? What's the counter at? Five hours. <laughs> like any more data dumps. The thing sticks out saying, hey, look at this. Just an arena without much to actually look at, I guess. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Welcome to Hades. Oh. Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol. The ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the... What? Just bum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia 200 years from now and this new biosphere you're growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos. Spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocating. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. 
And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, Try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> so welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. So, Hades was literally developed to be exactly as his namesake, eradicate life. I mean, that makes it makes a lot of sense, believe it or not, to do things that way. Just to make sure things get started off well, but after a while, it's not necessary. Is this death? This one. Color me confounded, Lizzie Bashcore. Anyone who says the old TT codes to Bashcore is straight up lying. And you know it. All Drav don't have no truck with commercialized razzled at. Oh my god, this is gonna give me a freaking aneurysm. No, uh, heck, I'd rather guzzle a liter of citrum runoff than listen to Grey swarm for 30 seconds, hand to God, I swear, on my mama's grave, and she was religious. Now, nah, that ain't Bashcore blast in the Hades lab, shaking the walls, rattling folks' teeth. It's death metal, girl. Classical music, 80s and 90s mostly. Got me some Dutch deathcore, some Japanese gore grind, some Swedish cannibal theme stuff, too. Stop by if you want to listen, or heck, just come within 50 meters of the lab and ain't no bash core you'll see, or hear. Rather, in the screech that renders the ear and feel in the throbbing pulse of the floor and walls and ceilings to all of you up. This guy's probably the reason why Hades is so fucked up. Holy shit, dude. And the request to turn it down, no can do, Lucy. This is how I code. Turn down my death metal, might as well give up stimulants, chocolate malts, and industrial accident vids. Last I heard, we were supposed to be coding Hades down here, and I am really supposed to be... Am I really supposed to code an extinction protocol without death metal to inspire me? Yeah, so they hired a literal psychopath to program a killing machine. Literally, oh my god. You guys are fucking stupid. Just pop three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out Goldilocks' solution to Gaia's rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10-12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every usurpation protocol design failed in, failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard and it degraded the Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers. Sometimes her arms, too. So that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business. So, had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for wear. Too soft, and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operation, only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re, re reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear, ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity, then unseat it from command position so Haiti can slip in the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Those blues are coming on pretty strong now, so I'm not really describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. So you gave it the ability to basically kidnap the Gaia core and lock it away in a fucking uh, brig. <laughs> what makes you think that it wouldn't just decide to keep control? Archive abuse. Is that what that says? Yeah. Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo archive submission. I'm not going to read that out for your... I'm not going to read that either. Submission in just five days and oh, what a doozy. Despite early warnings and appropriate materials, you choose to submit holographic remasters of acknowledged classics of extreme exploitation cinema. Allow me then to thank you on two counts. 
one for giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission, thereby consigning your favorite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of making a millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved extreme, perhaps, but art. Two. For clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of obscenity, you have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judge Potter's famous utterance, I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. <laughs> nice. Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily so reject all of your future submissions, sight unseen. Perhaps you might invest the time you would have spent preparing for their submissions on, oh, I don't know, your assigned work? We have a world to save, after all, or the rest of us do, anyway. Dr. Semina, I can't pronounce that, even though I'm sure I've heard it multiple times. Yeah, well, it's what happens when you put a psychopath in, tar in charge of an extinction it's machine. Way onwards. Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now, let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances, but as one of the authors of the accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. No. <laughs> Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development, all of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So, si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. Cool. So every human on Earth now is just a clone. So I might have been right. I may be just a clone of Elizabeth Sobek. The ectogenic chambers arrived, in two, arrived two days ago. I spent the last 36 hours examining them and poring over te technical documentation. They're a revelation astounding. I don't know what you had to give Far Zenith in trade to get these chambers, but it was worth it. In a single leap, their embryologists have vaulted, pa have vaulted past 50 years of technological shortcomings, the risks of... ECMO resolved, nutrition delivery resolved, hormonal stability resolved, 12 other risk areas resolved. Before I examined these chambers, I considered the Odyssey to be a fool's errand. But if the rest of the FC's technology is this level, well, a human colony around Sirius doesn't seem so impossible after all. Mass fabrication of the chambers will present a number of challenges, but I'm confident that they can be resolved. I'm going to rest for a few hours and get back to it. Expect a fabrication plan within 48 hours. God, I couldn't imagine working on a project like this. Like, if I had the expertise, I'd do it, but damn. Stop fucking around. I want to read the things. I... <laughs> Number one was successfully sealed before the swarm advancing across Xinjiang province. 
could detect it. Ping back from crucial systems is good for our maiden voyage. A success. Regards my disputes with the betas over ziggle selection. Of course, I understand we have a limited overhead to run simulations of gene flow and our future humans, but we can all agree there is margin for refinement in future crater populations. Man, garbage. In addition to personally overseeing completion of the number two site inside Mount Namuli, I will formulate and propose a modified Ziggler selection plan within the week. Okay. Was there another one somewhere over here that I was? Right there. Are these what I what I think they are? Development of the artificial persona for Cradle Servitors, Nurturer, Disciplinary, and Healer continues at a good pace. We are targeting Turing point four for these constructs. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the Turing scale is, it's basically a scale of sentience, so to speak. Like, how close is a machine or an AI actually to being, like, its own sentient creature? That is, for those of you who don't understand what the Turing scale is, that is what it's referring to by Turing 0.04. And I don't remember the exact level of Turing necessary to be classified as its own sentient species at that point, but that is what the Turing scale is for. Uh, for these constructs, this should allow low-grade empathy and limited improvision without undermining adherence to codified behavior sets. The stimulus-driven switching of Persona, however, is proving to be a greater software challenge than anticipated, especially considering we are entrenched, uh, considering our entrenched feedback loops between the disciplinarian and healer Persona. I have you, you're <laughs> so you made AI with split personality. I have also attached the reports from an incident where a servitor running the mother Persona intervened on a disciplinarian servitor's behavior. A parental arg argument, if you will. Amusing on first glance, perhaps, but deeply concerning. I have attached a comprehensive plan for correcting these interactive protocol shortcomings in just blank. Artificial wombs. Machines to spawn a new generation of human beings. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised they were creating, using Turing tests to create AI. I mean, they literally said that Gaia would be completely sentient, which would be Cradle crossing that threshold Cradle. I was talking about earlier. Elizabeth said a new generation of humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. Oh, Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. The hatch wouldn't open. Something, something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. Oh, don't say! <laughs> I thought that was a bottomless pit there for a minute. Okay. Is there something back here? Nope. Slights. Though Capric form show superior load bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the Quaternary Extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Looks like it Gaia? used to hold something. Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet. And yet. I find the loss of megafaunal species unaccountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion causes me to experience a grief that is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? No, no, Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. So you literally built Gaia to value all life, even extinct dinosaurs. That's why she feels sad that they went extinct, even though it was literally a consequence of... ...celestial events. 
Pure logic won't cut it, Ted. To pull this off, Gaia's going to need to have some skin in the game. It has to care. What if it runs amok? Have we learned nothing from our mistakes? Your mistakes, I think you mean? All I'm saying is, give it a kill switch. She was just born, Ted. I'm not gonna put a gun to her head while she's still in the cradle. You talk like it's a child. What if it becomes a monster? Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? <sighs> of course, Gaia, go on. I'm sorry to contradict you, but Mr. Farrow's argument is sound. At this point, the development of my psyche is not entirely predictable. To ensure preservation of life, a hardwired override is, I believe, a necessary safeguard. There. Satisfied, Ted? Jeez, let's just do what it says. Okay, <laughs> very smart. It knows the dangers of its own existence. God, could you imagine being told, listening in on a conversation, if someone basically saying, put a bomb inside their head because you don't know what they're going to do, and then having the wherewithal to go, you know, that's a good point. I could be quite dangerous. Do it. <laughs> that's not something a human would be able to do. You will undergo a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final statement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth, I detect distress. Are you all right? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped, but all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... Guy, there's nothing left out there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead in fear and agony. What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you? I kind of like Gaia. I like the voice. I wonder who voice acted her. It's very, uh, very calming. Very smooth. Okay, so what direction do I need to go here? Enter the office. I, is this not the office? Glass. I can't get through that. Okay, I gotta probably open the door. Before I look anything up, I'd have to ditch something. That's fine. I don't really care. Odyssey has failed. All terrible news, I'm afraid, Far Zenith has informed me that Odyssey's mission has failed. Last night, telemetry indicated a catastrophic antimatter containment failure as the drive spun up to depart the solar system. I see, so they also built a ship for colonies to go out. The ship, its crew, its cargo of ziggots and seeds, its alpha build of Apollo. All lost. Zero Dawn is now the only hope for the continuation of the human species and earthly life. So they, they had two systems that they tried. They tried Odyssey and Zero Dawn. Odyssey being what people think it is. Send, it out, send people, well, eggs out to space and colonize a planet similar to Earth. And it didn't work. That is unfortunate. What the heck? Oh, it's at the box. Scan that bitch. It's coming along, Liz. I'm positive about it, if those words can still mean anything. Had my sleeves rolled up, negotiating with frozen zoos for their samples. So many species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas suspended in what-ifs. More than 14,000 that would extinct between 2000 and 2043. We've started mapping out primary succession, selecting the pioneer program or, or uh, the pioneer organisms for a balanced and sustainable biosphere, microorganisms, and insects, rabbits, hawks, foxes, wolves, thousands more that will have to wait their turn until our new generation can be entrusted with the heavy duty of restoring them. 
are with the duty of restoring it, so they can return to a world that a uh, world that this time will understand the concept of conservation before it's too late. There's already been too many too lates. We lost a whole collection team during the swarm breakthrough in Minamar. The samples we lost were, well, irreplaceable. But thanks to you, the circle of life will bend, not break. The earth was a lifeless rock before, and someday it will be again, but not now. Not like this, and not on our watch. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this, I can restore the registry at the hatch inside All Mother. Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. Oh, no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? The guy's a dick. <laughs> Get out of there. What you found is too valuable. You're too valuable. My entire life, I've always known one thing with prophetic certainty. That I was destined for glory as a great champion of the sun. Even when Joran was murdered, even when Meridian fell, I never doubted my destiny. Until you came along. When I heard that you had survived, a doubt took root in my mind. As sure as the sun rises and falls each day, those I am bade to kill die. And yet I fail. How? Why? Does he have a necklace of bullets? He With does. With each dig site <laughs> you attacked, each loyal soldier you killed, this pestering doubt grew. It grew when High Priest Bahavas went missing, and when the true Sun King Item was snatched away. It not only grew, but multiplied. I kept thinking of the moment my knife pierced your throat. One twist, a simple tug of the blade, and you would have bled out. In slaughter, I am a practiced hand. So why hesitate? Why fail my destined purpose? See that scar on your cheek? You didn't get to finish. Yes, I remember. He fought well. For a savage. His name was Rost. And he was a better man than you could ever hope to be. The better man is the one who doesn't end up with his guts steaming on the ground. <laughs> no. It wasn't him. I could have finished you before he attacked. But I didn't. This... Failing troubled my thoughts, haunted every step. It was only when I captured you, down in that place, that I finally glimpsed the sun's design etched at length across the course of events. You were meant to survive that day on the mountain. 
Meant to interfere at dig sites and kill my men. Meant to eliminate High Priest Bahavas. Meant to snatch Itaman away. Conversely, I was meant to capture you. Here. So that you might die as a sacrificial offering to the sun. Everything as it was meant to be. Predestined and preordained. <laughs> some destiny. You're following orders, not some grand cosmic design. You're a puppet with Hades yanking the strings, a pawn pushed around by larger forces. It'd be laughable if there weren't so much killing involved. Hades is an ancient machine, not the buried shadow of Karja myth. It doesn't care about Meridian. It wants to kill everything and everyone. And you are its dutiful slave. I serve not the buried shadow, but the sun in shadow. All halves of nature joined to one cause. Shadow to sun, dark to light. Do you really not hear how ridiculous that sounds? You've gone from serving an insane homicidal sun king to an insane homicidal machine. You're moving down in the world, not up. I'll remember those words as I watch your corpse burn. Whatever's left of it. You fail to grasp the point. As surely as you've been conquered, so has all doubt. We'll see about that. And with certainty of belief comes unstoppable force. Then you just cage and put your faith to the test. See if things work out like you expect. The circle has closed. Every element is in its proper place, exactly where it belongs. The errant beast, now caged, will serve her true purpose. A sacrificial animal. Oh, speaking of sacrifice, I forgot to tell you. After you crashed the Eclipse Network, I sent messengers into the East. To rally the forces there and mount an invasion of the Sacred Land. I ordered every Nora killed. I was hoping to catch you there, but alas, it all seems to have been unnecessary. Why butcher dozens of innocents for no gain? It's a waste of effort. You're right. I won't even be there to enjoy it. In any case, I couldn't recall the order even if I wished to. Thanks to your destruction of the network, Communication over distances is impossible. You not only doomed yourself, but an entire tribe. Do we not see the scorching judgment of the sun in these events? Your focus, such a powerful device, isn't it? And yet, so fragile. So you see, this time, I did not hesitate. The knife has already been twisted. Well, there goes all that information data stored up. Faithful, rejoice! Our years in shadow are over. A new dawn trembles on the horizon. A new day soon to break. And when it does, the false Sun King will be dead, and Holy Meridian ours once more. In this, I have become an instrument of prophecy. All halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, light to dark, night to day. Behold, 
Hold your seats! Can you not see the proof of the sun's blessing before your eyes? How else could shackles such as these prowl in broad light of day? Were they not approved by the sun and joined to our cause? Many years ago, to consecrate this great ring, the Radiant Turan ordered many faithless crushed beneath the hooves of the behemoth. Mighty is the radiance in the eye of the sun, but it is mightier still, infused with the power of shadow. Let this one, who schemed and slithered, be the first to die. Let her be the first of thousands! canister on its belly. Looks important. Bitch. <laughs> Get fucked. Where's your sun god now, Silence. bitch? <laughs>
So you're here. Really here. You risked your life. Of course I did. If you'd been killed, the Nora Sacred Mountain would never have given up its secrets. Too bad you wasted your time, then. Helis destroyed my focus. And the Alpha Registry with it. Not at all. The whole time I've been monitoring your focus, I've duplicated every data file you scanned. Installing that data to a new focus was trivially easy. Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. You're really good at making it impossible to like you, Sans. <laughs> yeah, that kind of, was kind of creepy. I guess I need this. It's time to see where you were born. Maybe you'll even learn why. Yeah. Meet the machine that birthed me into this world. Isn't that how you put it? I'll be off. Wait. We're starting to get yes? kind of cold. Let's do this shut that window. How did you track my location when I wasn't wearing a focus? It doesn't take a genius to surmise that Helis would throw you into the sun ring at high noon. I wore out two striders getting here in time, but I did. Now be on your way. Since when can you override machines? Ever since you discovered the technique. I had to destroy a corruptor to obtain the necessary parts, of course. But your example showed me how to do that as well. Yet another benefit of monitoring your activities through your focus. Truth be told, the underlying logic of the technique isn't so different from rites practiced by Banuk shamans. Though, of course, far more advanced. Great. You're welcome, I guess. Helis recognized you back in the Sunring. You told me that you'd assisted the Eclipse. Not that you knew the man who killed my... Who almost killed me. So now you know. The man is a serious threat, so let's do all we can to make sure that he and Hades don't succeed. Right. I'm assuming this guy's been nuked because he's got like the piercings and stuff that they use. I'll be on my way. To make matters worse, Helis ordered an Eclipse detachment to attack the Nora Sacred Land. The tribe's already weak. They won't stand a chance. You should come with me. Oh, absolutely not. I have preparations to make elsewhere. What kind of... Why do I bother asking? You're not gonna tell me. When the time is right, I'll be in touch. I'll contact you later. In the meantime, should you need to return to Shadow Carja territory, I brought armor to conceal your identity. You think of everything, don't you? One of us has to. Aloy. Hey, when you were recovering the Alpha Registry down in the Zero Dawn Bunker, I was needlessly cruel. For your sake, I hope there is someone waiting there for you inside the mountain. Not a what, but a who. Yeah! You doubt it, though. <laughs> Why can you move faster than... whatever. All right, armor. I want to see this new armor. Ah. Edgy boy armor. Gotcha. Don't really care, though. Uh, we are not traveling that far. running that far. Fuck. How many skill points do I have? Oh, why do I have 11 skill? Okay. Fucking you like that? Um. Sure. Sure. Can 
have that fast travel now? Please, for the love of bejeebus. Oh, I had like a bunch of level ups. No oh, fucking wonder. Damn it! Why are you gonna make me run all the way back? That's so fucking bullshit. Unless there's somewhere closer I can get that's not like. Uh, let's say... Here. I can fast travel there. Fast travel there. I can fast travel there. But I can't fast travel there. Or there. I, yeah, I'm not running 4,000 fucking kilometers. <laughs> Hey gamers, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, maybe even subscribe. The support always helps. And as always, remember to keep on gaming, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.